right, example A says we need to determine if the following solids are polyhedrons. And then if the solid is a polyhedron, we need to name it and find the number of faces, edges, and vertices it has. So for our uh, first example here, we have a three-sided figure on top. So it's made from a triangle. And all of the bases, or all the sides, are also triangles. So this first one is a triangular pyramid. And a triangular pyramid is called a tetrahedron. And if you looked at your looked at the first video here, we kind of went over this, uh, that list of shapes, and it's also listed in your text in case you didn't get a chance to look at it yet. Tetrahedron, kind of a long name. Yeah, tetrahedron. Uh, our second one then is also a polyhedron because it's made of straight sides and shapes that are entirely made of straight sides. Encloses three-dimensional space. Um, the ends are pentagons, so even though this actually isn't um, made of entirely equal shapes, obviously the top and the bottom are pentagons here, the sides are all rectangles. For instance, here, let me do that in orange. Here's an example of one of the rectangles right here outlined in orange. So we don't have one of our basic five shapes that's made entirely of five shape, or of the same shape. But because the top and bottom are pentagons, we can call this a pentagonal prism. A prism basically has one shape on each end and then flat sides connecting them. So this one is a pentagon, pentagonal prism. G-O-N-A-L, pentagonal prism. Okay, and then this last one, this last one actually doesn't qualify as a polyhedron. It is a cylinder, um, but a cylinder is not an example of a polyhedron because it isn't made of specific flat-sided shapes. So it's um, not qualifying as one of our polyhedrons, even though it has a name of its own. For example, B, uh, our question asks us to find the number of faces, vertices, and edges in an octagonal prism. Now, actually, this uh, picture that came with the text here is a, is a septagonal prism. It only has seven sides, but we're going to use it as kind of a, a reference anyway. Um, if we look at the top and bottom of our shape, they should be octagons, which means that each of those should have eight sides, right? So we, have, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight around, each, around the way, right? Which means that for faces, we'll have eight faces around the outside of the shape plus the top and the bottom which means we should have a total of 10 faces, right? And then if we have eight, uh, sides or, uh, eight sides around the top and the bottom, each one of those intersections is one of our vertices, right? So if there's eight sides, there's going to be eight vertices. So we have eight vertices on the top and eight vertices on the bottom. So that's going to give us 16 vertices. And then we can use Euler's theorem, which says that the number of faces plus the number of vertices is equal to the number of edges plus 2. Yeah? So we have 10 faces and 16 vertices, so that gives us a total of 26, and that's equal to the number of edges plus 2. So if we subtract 2 from each side, we get 24 is equal to the number of edges. So 10 faces, 16 vertices, and 24 edges. All right. All right. And for example C, we have a truncated icosahedron. Yeah, say that five times fast. It's a polyhedron with 12 regular pentagonal faces. So we have 12 faces that are made of regular five-sided figures. So all the sides are the same, and there's five of them. So there's 12 of these shapes. And then we have 20 regular hexagonal figures. So there's going to be 20 of these six-sided shapes right here, and 90 edges, so 90 intersections between the different shapes, right? The icosahedron closely resembles a soccer ball. That's why I have a picture of a soccer ball here. How many vertices does it have? And we need to explain our reasoning. Now, obviously, the vertices are going to be right here where we have these intersections of all the sides coming together. Now, we could go around and count them all, but we'd really have to have a lot, much longer video. <laughs> so we're going to use our, uh, our Euler's theorem again. And Euler's theorem says that the number of faces plus the number of vertices equals the number of edges plus 2. So the number of faces we have, we have 12 of the pentagons and 20 of the hexagons. So we have a total of 36 faces. 
and then we have 90 edges plus 2. So what we're missing then is, of course, the number of vertices. So vertices we'll just leave as a variable, and we put 90 in for our edges, leave our 2, and put 36 in for our faces. So now we just solve for V, right? We can put the 90 and the 2 together, of course we get 92, so we'll just kind of substitute that in there. And then if we subtract 36 from each side, that'll go away and we'll have V over here by itself, which is what we want. And then 92 minus 36, did I say 36? 20, 30, wow, 32. Jeez, it'd be nice if I could count. I'd be a much better teacher if I could count, huh? Especially for math. <laughs> 92 minus 32 is 60. So that gives us a total of 60 vertices. And our reasoning is, of course, that it follows Euler's theorem. There we go.